Good morning and welcome to this liturgy. Today we celebrate what's called the Feast of the Dedication. This is the commemoration of the founding of this church. It became customary in England in some places after the Reformation for churches whose feast of title falls on a major day, and Emmanuel Church's feast of title is Christmas Day, to transfer the celebration of the founding of the church to the first Sunday of October. And so that has become the custom here at Emmanuel. Today, you may notice, we also use for the first time our new red set of vestments. They're a wonderful addition to this space, and we're grateful for this generous gift. Normally, they would be blessed on the occasion of their first using. But because we can't be together physically this morning, we've chosen to bless these vestments after we're able to regather again. In the meantime, we hope that you enjoy them and that they aid you in your worship with us of Almighty God on this very special day. God bless you and God bless this church, the spirit of which resides ultimately in the hearts of all of you who participate with us this morning.
desires known and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord.
for I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. Then Jacob woke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I did not know it. And he was afraid and said, How awesome is this place! This is none other than the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. reading from 1st Peter. Rid yourselves, therefore, of all malice and all guile, insincerity, envy, and all slander. Like newborn infants, long for the pure spiritual milk, so that by it you may grow into salvation, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good. Come to him, a living stone, though rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious in God's sight. And like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house, to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. <clears throat> Jesus entered the temple and drove out all who were selling and buying in the temple. And he overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who sold doves. He said to them, It is written, My house shall be called a house of prayer but you are making it a den of robbers. The blind and the lame came to him in the temple, and he cured them. But when the chief priests and the scribes saw the amazing things that he did, and heard the children crying out in the temple, Hosanna to the son of David, they became angry and said to him, Do you hear what these are saying? Jesus said to them, Yes, have you never read out of the mouths of infants and nursing babies, you have prepared praise for yourself. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, praise to you, Lord Christ. of the founding of this parish church as a place of worship 331 years ago. A place to worship. What an idea. And it's an idea that shows up very early in the scriptures. The history of worship in the Bible is at first a little spotty and scattered. The first incidence of worship recorded in the Bible is one in which Cain and Abel bring offerings. And we see that worship in that first incident was a matter of bringing a sacrifice to the Lord. There is no more mention of worship of this or any other sort until Noah and all the animals have come out of the ark. And we read in Genesis, And Noah built an altar to the Lord, and took every clean beast and of every clean fowl, and offered burnt offerings on the altar. This is the first mention of an altar in the Bible. In the rest of the book of Genesis, there are a few descriptions of worship that are mostly instances of sacrifice, or of piling up stones to make an altar or a memorial. There are also verses that tell us of how so many of them held on to their pagan gods. Genesis 35 tells us how Jacob had to make his family put away their strange gods, after God ordered him to take his family and go to Bethel. In the book of Exodus, the push for the children of Israel to leave Egypt begins when God tells Moses, The elders of Israel will listen to you. Then you and the elders are to go to the king of Egypt and say to him, The Lord, the God of the Hebrews, has met with us. Let us take a three-day journey in the wilderness to offer sacrifices to the Lord our God. As we all know, it takes ten plagues before Pharaoh gives up and lets them go, and then there's some more time before things calm down enough that God can tell Moses how to build a place in which they are to worship him. It's not really a church or a temple, as we think of a church, as a building that is fixed and doesn't move. It was a tabernacle. That was really a great big tent that they had to carry everywhere they went, wandering in a sort of wilderness for almost 40 years. And that's something that Emmanuel Church has experienced as well over its 300-year history. Some periods of wandering in the wilderness. Through revolution, through the turning tide of public opinion, through great wars, economic disaster, a natural disaster in the form of a terrible fire that almost destroyed this building, and most recently, in an unforeseen pandemic. 
faithful parishioners have wandered in a spiritual wilderness from time to time, all the while carrying the spirit of this place in their hearts. So we know that being spiritual nomads isn't necessarily a bad thing. On the contrary, it can sometimes be good for us. The shared work that we've all engaged in recently of remembering and holding on to what is holy and good, as well as what is a shared history and journey, bonds us more closely together as a Christian family. It has probably been a good thing for Emmanuel, although it rarely feels this way at the time. But of course, having a church building gives us a sense of permanence as a part of the universal church, the body of Christ, the sort of permanence that the Israelites felt and King Solomon put into words when he said, The Lord said that he would dwell in the thick darkness. I have surely built you a house to dwell in, a settled place for you to abide in forever. Hmm, thick darkness. You see, there was no light in the Holy of Holies except what God brought to it, or what might leak in through the veil from the lampstand in the holy place. But whether there was darkness or light, we're told it was a settled place, as is this church. And, believe it or not, even though you're not able to be here physically at this moment, what true light there is in this place, well, in part, it is from God's light shining in each of your hearts. For some time now, we've been planning how it is that we'll be able to safely regather in this space again in the very near, I hope, future. In the meantime, we, all of us, continue to be this church, to hear his voice through the scriptures, to give gifts for the work of God's church, to receive absolution, to give him praise, and yes, to receive grace through Holy Communion, which is received by all when it is received by one. Until that day when we're able to come here again to see one another face to face, we continue to build the true church, the blessed company of all faithful people. Today, as each of us comes to God, living stones and precious, we can rest assured that we, each of us, are being built up as a spiritual house, as a holy priesthood. If there's anything we've learned during this time of physical separation, separation from this building and from one another, then it is that we are the building blocks that make up Christ's body. And in times like these, we're more aware than ever that we're supposed to reach out to the least among us. The faithful built this building. We continue to make it live by living Christ's gospel of transforming love. To truly build the church, we have to go out in the world to witness to the love of God and to tell our stories of encounter with God. So yes, this church, this beautiful building, is indeed important. But today we celebrate that God's people went from being nomads with a tabernacle to having a temple. But we also acknowledge and celebrate that even this temple, splendid as it is, is actually a kind of tabernacle that we take with us wherever we go. And from time to time, we're called to carry in our hearts the spirit that this building signifies because we know that this solid place, which we celebrate today, is a sign of where we're going and what God is doing as we move in that direction. 
Do not try to call people back to where they were. And do not try to call them to where you are, as beautiful as that place might seem to you. You must have the courage to go with them to a place that neither you nor they have ever been before. And with God's grace, that's what we do together. Hear us, Lord, for your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, and for all the blessings of this life. We will exalt you, O God, our King, and praise your name forever and ever. We pray for all who have died, that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. be upon them, who put their trust in you. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, in your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone, and so uphold us by your Spirit, 
that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
in whom we are built up as living stones of a holy temple, that we might offer thee for you a sacrifice of praise and prayer, which is holy and pleasing in your sight. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and with our archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever her seeing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Son, 
the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also, that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, O Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are all to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily
those of you at home are invited to make your spiritual communion at this time, please pray with me the following, either silently or aloud. In union, blessed Jesus, with the faithful gathered at every altar of your church, where your blessed body and blood are offered this day, I long to offer you praise and thanksgiving for creation and all the blessings of this life, for the redemption won for us by your life, death, and resurrection, for the means of grace and the hope of glory. I believe that you are truly present in the Holy Sacrament, and since I cannot at this time receive communion, I pray you to come into my heart, my soul, and my mind. Let nothing separate me from you. Let me serve you in this life until by your grace I come to your glorious kingdom and unending peace. Amen. Son and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. 